Visual intelligence can tell you what's in a scene, and spatial intelligence can tell you where it exists in 3D space. Meta just bridged that gap at scale, all while solving the massive 3D training data problem that's been holding AI back for decades. Let me explain. So Meta just open sourced a complete perception system for understanding the physical world. They've dropped two families of models, SAM3 and SAM3D, and together they form something a lot more interesting than either one alone. And the application span everything from visual effects to robotics and augmented reality. Let's start with SAM3. This is a unified model for detection, segmentation, and tracking of any visual concept across images and video. Not just objects, I'm talking about concepts. That's the key distinction. Previous models could segment fixed categories. Think person, car, or dog. SAM3 takes text prompts. These are short noun phrases and finds every instance of that concept. So not just an individual occurrence, but all the occurrences of that description in the scene. But here's where it gets really powerful. You're not just limited to objects. You can also prompt for the states and actions of those entities. So you can say things like people sitting down and voila, they're detected. You could say person holding a package, person on the ground. That last one is basically fall detection baked right in. You can describe whatever you want in plain language and the model just finds it. Now this works because Meta built a massive ontology of concepts that you see over here. They actually mined Wikipedia to create a dictionary of relationships between all these concepts and really focused on the long tail distribution. The rare stuff that people don't ask for, the edge cases, the things that don't show up very often but matter when they do. Oh, and by the way, it's all open source. You can fine tune it on your specific domain with just 50 to 100 examples. And people are already doing this, adapting this technology. Now, SAM3 is incredibly useful on its own, powering new features in Instagram's edits application, which is their video editor, Marketplace, Meta AI, but it's also being used for wildlife monitoring, ocean exploration, medical imaging. The performance is genuinely impressive. It's essentially doubling the state of the art on concept segmentation benchmarks. But let me tell you, this technology is inherently very, very dual use. So the same applications for visual effects can be applied to surveillance as well, an issue we'll talk about later. But understanding pixels is one thing. Understanding the dimensionality of objects and the spatial relationships within a scene is another thing entirely. That's where SAM 3D comes in. And in my opinion, that's where the real innovation is. So when I was at Google working on spatial computing, we have this fundamental constraint with 3D training data. You either had these like super clean synthetic synthetic 3D assets that a human modeled, like a chair on a white background, or those classic architecture scenes. Or you had to go out and like manually 3D scan the real world. Honestly, both are very difficult to scale, because if you do try to scale up these approaches, the costs just blow up. In other words, 3D AI efforts have been bottlenecked by this lack of 3D training data for decades. Well, Meta figured out a workaround. They basically borrowed the entire large language model playbook and applied it to 3D reconstruction. Instead of having artists create 3D ground truth from scratch, they built a data engine. Models generate multiple mesh options for a scene and human evaluators rank them. Basically, hey, this reconstruction looks better than that one. Let me pick it. Essentially verification instead of creation. Then you route the really weird edge cases to actual 3D artists who model it from scratch and then loop back their work into the training set and then you iterate from there. It's literally RLHF for geometry. So synthetic 3D assets become your pre-training data. Human ranking of real world reconstructions becomes your alignment step to bridge the simulation to reality gap. Suddenly you can annotate close to a million images with 3D ground truth. That is unprecedented scale for this domain. But here's where it gets really clever. This whole feedback loop is bi-directional, right? So as the model gets better at generating realistic meshes, the data Data engine gets better at producing training data, which makes the model better, which makes the data engine better. Meta is calling this post training for 3D, but really they have just industrialized the process of crossing from synthetic to real world 3D perception. Now there are two models in the SAM 3D release, SAM 3D objects for reconstructing scenes and individual objects within a scene. You segment them out and then you can pull them out into 3D. And then you've got SAM 3D body for human pose and shape estimation. Both models deliver state-of-the-art performance. So now you can take SAM 3, detect and segment every instance of a concept in an image or a video, say people sitting down, and then use SAM 3D to reconstruct each of those people in 3D with accurate pose estimation 
not just the people, the pose of the camera relative to them too, the spatial relationships between those people. Now Meta's shipping this in the Facebook marketplace right now. So you can visualize if that lamp or table fits in your living room before you buy it. The person on the other end just uploaded a 2D photo, but you can pull that out into 3D and place it in your living room. Now that's the consumer facing demo. The real application is way bigger. We're talking about a unified stack for physical world perception. You go from pixels to concepts to 3D geometry and pose. That's the robotics perception stack. We're talking about the foundation for making physical spaces and places programmable and queryable. And the best part is they just open sourced everything. SAM 3 model weights, SAM 3D objects, SAM 3D body. Their human body rig is also available under a commercial license. And evaluation data sets with actual messy real world images instead of the usual super clean synthetic benchmarks that are quite dated at this point. So let's talk about what this enables. There's the obvious stuff. Robotics gets better perception. You can segment and track objects in 2D and 3D space, which is fundamental for manipulation and navigation. Visual effects artists get automated rotoscoping as well as pose and depth estimation, which is amazing for reskinning reality. Heck, you can even use this to populate the rather empty space that is the so-called metaverse. Wildlife researchers can track individual animals across videos with these concept level queries. But I think most interestingly, spatial computing gets its perception layer that it's been missing. You can query a physical space like you query a database. That is the foundation for making the real world programmable. But here's the thing nobody wants to talk about. This is also the infrastructure for comprehensive surveillance. Detect any object, track any instance, reconstruct precise 3D poses and spatial relationships. That is not a research demo. We're talking about a deployment ready system. And since Meta is releasing this in a commercially licensed and open source fashion, it's about to be everywhere, in stores, in public spaces, in the devices you carry. The capability gap of what's technically possible and what's socially acceptable or legally regulated just got a lot wider. Now, I am not saying don't use this. I am saying understand what you're building with it. That is the double-edged nature of foundational infrastructure like this. It is powerful precisely because it is general purpose technology. Now, if you want to understand where all of this is heading, why physical AI and spatial intelligence are the next major platform shift, I've got a whole video breaking that down. Link over here. But for now, SAM3 and SAM3D are live. Go play with the demos on their website. Models are up on GitHub. Go build something amazing and tell me what are the use cases that you're the most excited about and maybe some of the ones that you're actually apprehensive about. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Cheers.